Python 3.12 introduced a lot of new functionality. If you want a, a little overview, then there's the video in the cards up in the top corner. Today, I want to talk about the new itatools.batched function, which is something that was you know, added especially to the itatools uh, library. It's really useful and now it exists. I really wonder why it didn't exist before because it seems very obvious um, to have. So yeah, I'm not sure it wasn't there before. It is there now and I'm gonna be walking you through what it is, how it does, how it works. Those were words in the right order, definitely. So, <laughs> so I've already done a video today. Um, ironically enough, I'm doing this in a batch. How about that? Um, so if I if I lose my mind, then I do apologize for that. If you found this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like it. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so by becoming a patron or a member. All the information you need is down below in the description. So to start with, we're going to go from it's a tools import batched. And I'm just going to show you a very simple example first before we get into something a little bit more comprehensive. So if we just have a list sequence, say so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we print uh, batched. And so we provide the iterable here, and then we provide the number of elements that should be in each batch. So in our case, we're gonna do two. And we do that. We'll see we just get an itertools.batched object because this is a generator. Much like everything in iterables or in itertools, it is you know, a generator or an iterator. I suppose it makes sense when you think this is itertools. If you want to see what it's actually doing, then we can do list batched. It's particularly useful that batched is a generator because it does actually make it really useful for if you've uh, you know opened a file and you want to do some batch processing on it, or if you've received a message from a socket and you want to do some batch processing on it and you can do it through that if you want. But if you just do this and you can see that we have our things in batches of two. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have our final batch over here, which is just, uh, which is just a batch of one. It just puts whatever elements are left at the end of the list in a batch on their own, even if the batch isn't the same size as the rest of it. So do keep in mind uh, that not all batches will be the same size necessarily. But now that we know how this works and what it does, I'm going to show you a more comprehensive example of how it can be used in the real world. So to do that, we need import JSON. We also need import time. And then from urllib.request, import URL open. And this is just uh, the Python built-in uh, URL lib essentially. Um, I wouldn't recommend using it in the real world like ever, but it's good for something like this. So one of the things that Batched is really useful for is doing some scraping on an API or a web page or whatever that has a rate limit because you can send, you know, a certain number of, uh, of requests per minute or per second, and then you can sleep for a bit and then you can send, you know, another set of batches and then sleep and then another set and it's just a bit nicer than having to manage, uh, you know, rate limits for each individual request. I mean, you can just do it in a batch. So first we are going to do URL, URL lib to open. I'm actually going to copy paste this because this is largely just setup code for what I want to do. Um, so we have this resp uh, URL open. We access the Python package index API for one of my own packages. And we get a list of all the versions um, using releases.keys. And then we also get the latest version um, for something that we're going to be using a little bit later. So if we then do for batch in batched uh, versions, and we're going to batch them in uh, batches of five, and we do for version in batch. There's going to be a lot of nested for statements if you use batch, unfortunately, but there you go. We can do some logging. So we can say checking version version. Uh, we can make a uh, or we can make a request to so URL open to and I'm just going to copy paste this URL because it's quite long. There we go. And then we can do whatever processing we want uh, on that. I made the executive decision to not do any processing as part of this example, just to keep things a little bit simple. Uh, but you can do whatever processing you want on that from there. And then at the end, you can do say time.sleep and we'll say two, for example, say. Uh, I don't think the Python package index API actually has much of a rate limiting thing, or if it is, I think it's fairly generous. 
uh, but we're just using this as a good example. So now if we run pyscript now, we can see that it's done that batch of five, they've all come through at once, and then it sleeps for a bit, and they've all come through at once. And then it sleeps a bit, it will come through at once again, and sleeps a bit. And you can see, you know, it will keep going like this until the end. So say, for example, this PyPy, uh, or PyPI, I've got to keep remembering that, API has, you know, say like 10 requests a minute or something. Then you can say uh, batched versions 10 here, and then you can time dot sleep 60. And then you've got uh, those 10 requests all in a row, and then you sleep, and then you, uh, you know, get another 10 requests. Rather than having, you know, one request and then maybe sleeping for, would it be six seconds? I think it'd be six seconds, but I might have got my maths wrong. You get the idea. But uh, the more eagle-eyed among you uh, may have noticed that we actually slept at the end uh, of here. So we got the final three. I believe these, uh, either these two or these three are in the final batch. And then we got to the end of the batch and then we, uh, we kept sleeping, which we don't need to do. So what we can do, and I should probably actually put some uh, logs here. Sleeping for rates limits. Dot, dot, dot. And we could do if version does not equal uh, latest, uh, then we do our time dot sleep. So as version is being set in this for loop, we can actually use it outside of it as well. So this version will always be the last element in a batch. And then we check if it's the latest version, then we know we've come to the end of the list and uh, we don't need to sleep. Unfortunately, that's the only way, because this is a generator, that is the only way of knowing. Um, so if you don't know beforehand, then you don't have a way of knowing in the batch either if it's the last one. But now if we run this again, you can see it sleeps for rate limits, sleeps for rate limits again, sleeps for rate limits again, and it will keep doing this. I've released quite a number of versions <laughs> of analytics over the years. It's kind of been uh, my almost my magnum opus in a way. Unless I count Carber as a magnum opus, then I'd probably say you know the channel was the magnum opus. But I'm just filling for time because we're about to get to the end, and you can see it doesn't sleep. So it is just these two. It checks these two, realizes oh, I'm at the end, and it doesn't actually sleep. So that's a little optimization you can do. But that is the general idea of the batch library in Python. If you have any questions about what you've seen here or any ideas on videos you want me to do, make sure to leave them down in the comments because I read every single one and your feedback is greatly appreciated. Just want to thank my members and patrons on screen now. One pound a month and you can be on this screen too. Special thank you to Mizard's Roshaman III for being very generous. Hopefully I haven't butchered your name, do let me know if I have. And I will see you in the next video, which I'm also recording today, so this is going to be fun. Uh, where we are talking about caching and how you can, if you if you think about it really hard, get infinite speed ups in Python. But you'll find out more about that next week.